Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. We're on to unit three. Hard to believe we've gone so fast. It's years cranking by. Okay, so lesson 3.1, I can multiply a whole number by a unit fraction is your I can statement. Before I get into the lesson itself, I just want to review some basic necessities for your math notebooks. Okay, there are three things that you have to have on every single page, and I'm going to be very fussy about that from this point forward because there are a few of us that are still struggling with this. Not only do you need to do each lesson, but they should be in order inside your math book. I shouldn't have to guess where you put them, okay? And you also need to make sure you include at least the next three items. Now, some of you will take notes to make them a little bit longer, and that's okay, all right? You take what you need, but these are what you have to have in every lesson, okay? Unless I specifically ask you to write something else down, which we knew we did a couple times in Unit 2, okay? So, for, lesson, for each lesson you do, you must put the lesson the word lesson, and 2.7, or in this case, 3.1. So at the top of your page, it should say lesson 3.1. If you don't have that, write it down, okay? The next thing you have to have is your I can statement. I can multiply a whole number by a unit fraction is the I can statement for this unit, so that's what I expect to see there, okay? The third thing you have to have is you have to have this heading down here for practice problems in addition to actually copying down the entire problem and completing it. Okay, I still got kids putting just answers in their book. That's not going to be okay from this point forward. Okay, we've talked about that enough. Now, if it's a word problem, I will tell you whether or not you need to write it down when we get to those. Okay, most of the times I'm just going to have you write the equation and then give me the answer for those. All right, so let's take a look at some different symbols for multiplication. All right, we've got the time symbol that we're all used to, the X, the star up here, which you will see used for multiplication, and also the looks like a giant period stuck in the middle of those two numbers, but that, that dot also stands for multiplication. Okay, For division, we can see it 12 divided by 4 written like this, 12 divided by 4 written like this, 12 divided by 4, this is the one we're most common with, probably these two, and then 12 fourths. So you have to remember this line in this fraction means division. All right, so let's talk about multiplying unit fractions because that's really what we're going to focus on for right now. You need to remember that multiplication is a quick way to do repeated addition. So let's look at some whole numbers first. I've got 3 times 8, okay? 3 times 8 is the same as saying 8 plus 8 plus 8. Either way, you're going to get 24. When we multiply unit fractions, the exact same principle applies, okay? If I've got 3 times 1 eighth, that's the same as saying 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth. What does that equal? Well, Remember, when we add fractions or subtract them, as long as the denominator is the same, we just add or subtract the numerators. So when I add up those numerators, I'm going to get 3 eighths. Okay? So that's just a quick way. And you're going to really want to wrap your head around this. You might need to jot something down here to help you kind of remember that. But you're really going to want to get your head wrapped around this because we're going to be doing a lot with that in this unit with the multiplication of fractions. Okay? Now, we're going to take a look at this. This is a page I took out of the math journal, but we're going to take a look at this together. I'm just going to kind of walk you through some examples of how to multiply by a unit fraction. Okay, and Some of the stuff is going to look a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. But we're just going to go through it. You may need to back up, look at this again, and that's okay. All right, so let's take a look at right here. It says a path around a large park is 8 kilometers long. Alex ran around the path four times, which is given in this image over here. Okay, so... We know that 4 times 8 is what's going to give us our answer here, and that would be 32 kilometers. Okay, so he went 8 kilometers, and he did that 4 times, 32 kilometers. Now we're going to get down here to Kento. Okay, Kento ran around the same path 1 quarter or 1 fourth of the time. So you can see he ran around it here. Okay, so we have to do 1 fourth times 8. Now this is where it gets a little bit different. I want you to think about 8 of some object will help you. So whether it's candy bars or apples or whatever you can picture, picture 8 sitting there right now. Okay, we're doing 1 fourth times 8. Essentially, what we're saying is that's 8 divided by 4. We're putting those 8 apples into 4 equal groups. Okay, and that can also be written as this fraction here, 8 fourths. Okay. You want to think of one-fourth of eight as the same as dividing eight into those four equal groups like we talked about. And the numerator tells you you get one of those groups. So in this case, I've got four groups. I get one. And in each of those groups, if you can picture those apples, if I took my eight apples and put them in four equal groups, I'd have two in each group. Because I'm getting one-fourth of those, I get two apples. And in this case, one-fourth of eight kilometers is two kilometers. Okay. 
And you will, if it's a little confusing, we're going to hit another one, and hopefully that second one will clear that up for you a little bit. So the answer is going to be two kilometers in both of those. All right. Down here it says markers come in boxes of six. Alta has three boxes. Okay, so she's got three groups of six. Well, three times six is 18. Okay, so six taken three times, going to be 18 markers. Now, Isabel has one third of a box of six markers. So I'm going to just kind of, they've kind of shown you that in this illustration down here. So they took two of these markers, right? They took a third of the group of six. Okay, so they took my six and the, the denominator said I'm going to divide it into three equal parts. Three equal parts. And you can imagine there's two more boxes here. There'd be two markers in each of those. If I get one of those groups, that's one third of six, I'm going to get two markers. Again, imagine something, imagine six markers sitting in front of you right now. If you're going to put those into three equal groups, each group's going to have two in them. You get one of those three groups, that means you're going to get two markers. Okay? And this should be review. I mean, we know we covered this in fourth grade as well. All right, so let's go through some sample problems. I want to give you just an idea of some of the things that you're going to be working on, okay? So here is the very first question that we're going to take a look at. It's a word problem. It says, Jamie baked four pies. Ashley baked two times as many pies as Jamie. Josh baked one-fourth as many pies as Jamie. So the first question is, is how many pies did Ashley bake? So I'm going to go up here and it says she baked two times as many as Jamie. Well, if Jamie made four, okay, then that would be eight altogether. All right. Now I'm afraid my slides got a little out of order. The equation should have popped up there, but I'm sure it's going to pop up in some weird place, but we're just going to run with it. Okay. The next one says how many pies did Josh bake? He baked one-fourth as many pies as Jamie. Okay. So I'm going to take the number of pies that he had, four, and I'm going to put them into four equal groups because that's what my denominator tells me to do. And if I do that, see there's my goofy multiplication problem showing up down there. I'm going to get one-fourth times four equals one. Okay, remember that would be like four divided by four. Okay, we get one of those. We get one pi. All right, so let's go down here. We're going to do one-fourth of 16. Okay. That's taking 16 and putting it into four equal groups. I only get one of those. So if I get one out of four groups, I start with 16. Let's say I have 16 M&Ms sitting on the table. Okay, I split them into four equal groups. There's going to be four in each group. I get one of those. One-fourth of 16 is four. Okay, One-sixth of 18, same general principle. We're going to divide that up. When we do that, we get three. Okay, And if it helps you at home, if you're watching this, and you're just a little bit gets a little confusing for you, maybe get something out that you can count on. Maybe it's pennies or something else or macaroni noodles or something that you can kind of divvy up into groups so you can get a good visual of what that's going to look like. All right. So here are your practice problems. It says to solve. So practice problem number one, one eighth of 32 equals and practice problem number two, one fifth of 25 or times 25. Those mean the same thing. Okay, one eighth of 32 is the same as saying one eighth times 32. So just don't get confused by that when you look at that. Okay, down here you have to solve them and solve, and you have to write the multiplication equation for the problem below. Whoopsie, what happened there? Pardon me. Let me get that back up so we can look at that. <laughs> Apparently, I slid a little bit too far there. Okay, so this is Matthew has 24 football cards. Stephen has one sixth as many football cards as Matthew. Okay, this is where I don't need you to copy down this whole problem. Okay. You can write down problem number three, although it's not there. And then I want you to just put down how many football cards does Stephen have. Write that down and then put the answer. And then I want you to write the equation for that. I don't need you to word, write the words, write the equation. Just show me the equation in your math notebook. And that's it for today.